Resources seems to be doing everything right to deliver on some very nice returns. Fasten your seatbelts, folks. This is going to be a good one. Arc Resources is a producer and developer of oil and natural gas within the Canadian energy sector. Since their inception, they have built a reputation for their sustainable practices and strategic growth, primarily in the Western Canadian sedimentary basin. They have been pivotal in the exploration and development of the Montney region, one of Canada's most significant hydrocarbon producing areas. Over the years, ARC Resources has expanded its portfolio through strategic acquisitions and efficient resource management, balancing profitability with environmental stewardship. Their consistent performance and commitment to corporate responsibility have made them a notable entity in Canada's energy industry. Join the conversation and let us know in the comments if you hold any ARX shares. Your participation is of course well appreciated. Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date on future content and a huge thank you for that click. Arc Resources has been doing very well in the last three years, but before that, they did trend down for some time, and that really makes me want to hit their fundamentals to see if the Arc Resources of today are not poised to drift down like the Arc Resources of old. Of course, to do this right, and to really get into those numbers, we, as usual, will need to call on our good old buddy, Mr. Math. We, of course, are going to start, as we always do, with a little bit of surface data. They have a current value of $21.60. That, of course, is at the time of recording. Their market cap comes in at $13.04 billion, and they have a beta of 1.46, so they're definitely more volatile than the market average. Their earnings per share come in at 2.93, and they have a price-to-earnings ratio of 7.10. Now, the average in their sector is 14.7. And just to give you a general idea, idea of where they stand, we have white cap resources with a P.E. ratio all the way down at 6.4. Torlamine, they have a P.E. ratio of 22.5. And Prairie Sky Royalty, way up there at 24.9. Now if we switch over to their price to book ratio, that comes in at 1.80. Now the actual average of their peers is 1.50. So they're a little bit higher on the price to book ratio. Their return on equity, that comes in at 27.39%. Overall, that surface data looks pretty good and I'm happy with the numbers thus far. However, we of course are gonna to need to drill down a wee bit more to check out that cash situation. They have a revenue of 6.45 billion and their earnings come in at 1.83 billion. Now those earnings are not projected to grow. They're actually forecast to decline by 4.5% per year over their next three years. I never like to see this. This forecast is all about pricing and that is going to pull down their earnings. But interestingly enough, their earnings per share is actually forecast to rise. So that certainly takes the sting out of that forecast to decline. Their profit margin comes in at 11.7%. They have a free cash flow of 896.20 million, and their operating cash flow comes in at 2.57 billion. But let's take a look at their fair value. The current value used in these calculations was $21.62, and using a discounted cash flow model, we get a fair value of $26.63. This means that they're undervalued by 18.8%. That actually does jive with what a lot of analysts are saying and that they think this stock is set to grow. Other than the earnings forecast to decline, their overall cash situation is not that bad. Well, let's peel back another layer and check out their returns. They have a dividend yield of 3.145%. That is a quarterly dividend of 17 cents per share. Payout ratio on that comes in at 21.84%. So that is pretty sustainable. When we look at their return on investment for the three year, their price rose from $8.61 to $21.60. That is a return on investment of 150.87%. Factor in the dividends, we get a total return of 166.27%. Holy banana bread, that is pretty good. When we look at the one year, their price rose from $18.85 to $21.60. That's a return on investment of 14.59%. And adding in those dividends, we do get a total return of 17.98%. That's not too shabby at all. If we look at their 2023 year to date, they rose from $18.05 to $21.60. That's a return on investment of 19.67%. And factoring in the dividends, we do get a total return of 20 
23.21%. I cannot argue against those numbers at all. Their returns are great. Okay, though, let's dive into their debt and see what kind of story we're going to find there. They have a total debt of $1.1 billion, but their total equities, that comes in at $7.15 billion, meaning their debt to equity ratio comes in at 15.5%. I'm okay with that. This debt to equity ratio not only looks good, but it has declined from 24.2% over the last five years. Their debt situation is moving in the right direction. In terms of cash and cash equivalents, they don't have a lot, 2.20 million. Let's take a look at the short term. On the short term, they have assets of 736.0 million and liabilities of 985.40 million, which certainly love to have seen those numbers reversed. On the long term, much better situation. Their assets come in at 11.19 billion and their liabilities come in at 3.79 billion. Overall, this debt situation is not bad. The debt is well covered by their operating cash flow and the interest on that debt is also well covered by their EBIT. You know, those earnings before interest and taxes. I do like this debt situation. It's not bad. We have now come to that point where we must ask, well, what is the final verdict? When we look at this company on the outside, they shine bright and it is hard to not want to just jump in. However, when we do dig in, we see some concerns with the forecast decline in earnings and their 10-year chart, which does not instill a ton of confidence. In the last three years, they have turned things around a lot, and that does hold weight for sure. They have recovered, and they have done that in a bear market and through a sector slump, which is not an easy path by any means. This is not a stock for the passive income gang, but it is a really nice total return stock, which does deserve, at the very least, watch list status. I do believe this stock will continue to rise, and maybe the crazy growth is behind us, but then again, maybe there is more to come. As usual, if you are interested in this stock today, or any stocks I bring up on the channel, don't forget to put in a whole heaping helping of due diligence before you place any of your hard-earned money on the table. Keep the learning going. Watch my video on ROE Total Return Stocks linked on the left, or test YouTube's recommendation skill by checking out the video on the right. Your choice will decide the winner, and I will see you in the next video.